ethics, which unfortunately is something being taught in every high school in America. Situation ethics basically says that right and wrong depend on circumstances. In other words, it's moral relativism, where you make the rules as you go on. When it's convenient, you change the rules. Do we know politicians that have done that? I believe at this stage in the game, people shouted out Hitler. And he was like, oh, we don't have to go that far. Just go to Washington. Just go to the White House. This leads me... Or this, sorry, I want to make sure that it's crystal clear and quote him directly, so it's not. Uh, I can't be accused of paraphrasing in this particular situation because it's, it's important you realize how ridiculous what he says is. He said, "Quote: Of course, this leads us when there are no moral absolutes, leads us to sexual immorality, leads us to sexual abuse, leads us to perversion, and no hope, no hope." Saying that. Anyone that's an atheist without God steering the ship or without someone like him speaking on God's behalf steering the ship is sexually immoral, someone who abuses sexually and is a pervert. These are the words of a man with an unclean conscience. I don't need a Bible. I don't need a pastor to tell me it's a bad idea to sexually abuse someone. Ted Cruz and his old man Raphael might have to revert back to Romans 1 every single time that they're fighting back the urge to head out to the barnyard and be taken roughly from behind by an underage pig. But, see, for me, that's never really been a particular problem. It's not a problem of mine. So, don't judge me. Don't judge us, Raphael Cruz, Ted Cruz, by your own faltering moral compass. Thanks very much. When you hear something like this, Someone saying that if there's no God in your world, you're a sexual pervert and you're immoral. These are the ravings of a dangerous fringe lunatic. And the idea that something that came from his chlorine-saturated gene pool and grew up having his head filled by his father's short-sighted hate speech is a hot pick for president, that's frankly scary. Furthermore, This goes back to the idea that you should have to keep your religion the hell out of politics. You can have the hateful homophobic interpretation of the Bible that helps you cash in, or don't have the hateful interpretation of the Bible that helps you cash in. Whatever gets you through the day, bitch. But the moment the Cruz family started spreading ideas like, oh, if you agree with Harry Reid, you're blowing it with God. Yeah. That's when it becomes the job of people like me to say no. Absolutely not. Harry Reid, you're completely within your rights as a human being to think that he's a useless pustule. Many do. I might be one of them. But if somebody likes him, thinks Harry Reid is just the bee's freaking knees, doesn't mean you're blowing it with God. Doesn't mean you're going to H-E double hockey sticks the way Raphael Cruz would suggest. See, Thomas Jefferson had this idea that we as a country have used as a cornerstone of the principles of being American, and that is a separation of church and state. And you know what's extra ironic about Cruz and his dad? The first thing you hear out of Ted Cruz's mouth in any setting is, oh, I'm the son of an immigrant. I'm the son of an immigrant. I'm the son of an immigrant. Did I tell you how I was the son of an immigrant? Like that somehow makes all the hateful homophobic stuff I'm about to say okay. But this is the deal. I don't know if you're familiar with his family history. Ted Cruz's dad, Rafael, left Cuba to come to America after fighting for Castro in the revolution. And after seeing that Cuba under Castro was not good times, he thought it would... After seeing that Cuba under Castro was not the good times that he thought it would be, when he picked up a gun and helped install him to power, after he was like, oop, that was a mistake, he bailed for America. But here's the thing, the Cruz rhetoric... Is a little familiar somehow. The crew's suggestion that without people like him interpreting the Bible for us, we're going to read it wrong and start having sex with farm animals, or if we don't believe in his version of God, or if we decide we're going to be atheists, we're going to start finding 11-year-old boys to play Catholic priest and altar, with, uh, altar boy with. It's reminiscent of a certain way of thinking, isn't it? This whole idea that we don't know how to act, therefore we need someone to tell us how to act. What does that remind you of? All these ideas that the Cruz family love to put forward when they're speaking to their flock of AR-15 hoarding, Bible-thumping, gay-hating survivalists, all these ideas say, hey, 
People are not capable of thinking, of thinking for themselves. They need to be told what to do or the system breaks down and left to our own devices. We'll make bad sexual decisions with regard to children and animals. We'll be a bunch of raping, looting, burning and shooting heathens destined to send the world to hell in a handbasket, which, by the way, I hope your women folk are at home waving. See, isn't making decisions for yourself, isn't that sort of the, oh, what would you call it, inalienable right? Isn't that the sort of human right that a lot of people fled Cuba to make here in America, like the Cruz family? Making decisions for yourself? Isn't that why you bailed on Castro to come to America? Weren't those rights taken away? By a certain dictator whose name rhymes with Schmidel Schmastro. Yeah. So, Rafael Cruz, sorry things didn't pan out. Ted Cruz, sorry things didn't pan out for your dad when he picked up a gun and helped install Castro to power. Sorry he had to flee to find freedom here in America. Glad we could provide that for him. But it would be nice if he took his communist dictatorship propaganda back home. Just because he had to suffer through that. I mean, I can understand being a little butthurt. Oh, man. I picked up a gun to install Castro to power. And then it was just awful. Just awful. As it turns out, communist dictatorships, not that great. But just because Rafael Cruz had to suffer through it, I don't know. I don't think that means we should have to. And Ted Cruz, in the run-up to the election in 2016, if you really are to be a presidential hopeful, if you really are to make good of all the good parts of you, which are many, until you get your dad's hand out of your ass and prove you're not his hateful glove puppet puppet monkey boy, you continue to be a dismissible joke. We'll be back tomorrow. I just hate you so much.